Welcome everyone to our Every Nation Willow 6pm family. We are so excited that we can meet with you today. We are part of a global family of churches that makes disciples, raises leaders and plants churches and campus ministries in every nation. Over the weekend, me and my husband had so much fun checking out some of our other congregations around the world. And it was so amazing to hear the same DNA in all of them. So it's really such a privilege. We would like to specially welcome those of you who are joining us for the very first time. And we hope that you'll join us again when we can finally meet and see you in person. As a family, we love to celebrate and I'm sure you do too. So we would like to celebrate with you, even though not in person, but on screen, if you've had a birthday, an engagement, you graduated in this week, we are so excited with you. And if you're watching us on our watch party on Facebook, please send in the comments what you celebrated so we can celebrate with you and pray with you. This time has been such an amazing time for me and my family. Um, it was amazing having my husband at home, helping me with the kids. And yes, we had some overwhelming moments, but overall, it's really been an awesome time. But we do know that there are some families that are struggling over this time. And because of that, we started our Give Help, Get Help initiative. So if you need help or you want to give help, please check out our website for more information on that. We also have a lot of platforms where you can get our resources for our Connect Sundays. I've already mentioned we have a watch party on Facebook at 6 p.m. on a Sunday evening. But if you can't make that, you can also get it on our Every Nation Twane website or our YouTube channel, Every Nation Willows, and you can find our resources there. Those of you who joined us this week for our Tuesday and Thursday devotion, saw how awesome it is just to start the morning with devotion together in the Word and in prayer. Some of you I know stayed in bed and that's okay, but um, we, we would really like to encourage you that if you missed it this week to join us this week for our Tuesday and Thursday um, devotions on Instagram at 7.30 a.m. If you miss it on Instagram Live, you're really going to miss out, so please don't miss it, 7.30 Tuesday and Thursday mornings. This week, Christian really flexed his brain muscles in our quiz on Friday evening. It's so much fun. This week, my selfie was in my PJs, which wasn't very flattering, but it's fun. So please join us on a Friday evening between 6 and 7 p.m. on our WhatsApp group. We're building up to a big quiz of when we can gather again together. So don't miss out. There's lots of prizes that will be handed out and it's really just a fun time as a family together. Every year we have our Build Conference and I've missed a few. So I'm very excited that this year it's going online. So nobody has an excuse to miss out. Our theme for this year is refresh, repurpose and release. We'll be doing that on the 30th and 31st of May. That's a Saturday and Sunday. Please don't miss out. There's in our international leader, Steve Merrill is one of our speakers, as well as our South African leader, Roger Pierce. So we would really like to invite you. We will refresh in God's word, where we'll align ourselves with his purpose again, and we will trust him to rebuild our nation. So please join us 30 and 31st May. We would really like to invite you to turn up the sound on your TV or your phone right now or computer, wherever you're watching, and join us for a great time of worship as we worship our Father in song. Ciao Bona family, it's good to worship with you guys again. My name is Christian Miller, this is Yulani and this is Craig. We're going to be the worship team for tonight. Uh, let's just pray before we start. Lord, thank you that we can just come before you boldly as your children. We can know that there's no wall between us. We can freely worship you with, with nothing blocking us, Lord. I just pray that you'll come and teach us how to worship you in spirit and in truth tonight. Amen. I was buried beneath my shame 
Who could carry that kind of a weight? It was my turn till I made. I was breathing, but not alive. All my failures, I try to hide. It was my turn till I made it. Cause when you call my name.
inside of me I raise a hallelujah I will watch the darkness flee I raise a hallelujah In the middle of the mystery Thank you that we can just raise our hallelujahs in the middle of the storm. Lord, you are never caught off guard. You are always 100% aware of everything that's happening all the time. Thank you, Lord, that we can know that if you think everything's going to be all right, then everything will be all right. You have never stopped reigning from your throne. Thank you, Lord, that we can just trust in your sovereignty, Lord. 
You take everything that the enemy meant for evil and you turn it into good. Let's just raise our hallelujah as a last time. Why don't you just, where you are at the moment, why don't you just raise your hands and uh, just raise your hallelujah. No matter what the circumstances is, if you are, or circumstances are, if you are on the brink of losing your business, if you are on the brink of going broke, if you are broke already, let me tell you today that you can never have more than God planned for you to have. But the good news is that you can never have less than what He planned for you to have. So why don't you just where you are, just, just for a last time, just raise your hands and just surrender to Him. Just say, Lord, I raise my hallelujah in the middle of the storm, Lord. I raise a hallelujah I raise a hallelujah I raise a hallelujah I raise a hallelujah Keep 
Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Sing it. You are rainmaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you that we we don't need to lean on our understanding Lord your ways are higher than our ways and your thoughts are higher than our thoughts Lord 
And thank you, Lord, that when we look at you as a family and as individuals, Lord, we are looking towards someone who has never, ever made one mistake. Hello to everyone and thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, thank you and welcome especially to our evening service people. It is great always to be with you and to have you with us. Um, and I really hope that you all um, enjoyed the worship so much. I know it can be a little bit weird standing around in your own house, nobody there, a screen playing, but I really want to encourage you to every week just uh, press into God in those moments. It is so great to, to do that. So welcome to everyone. Uh, we are in a series called Rebuild. And um, we've been in the series. This is our third week with the series. And it's based on the scripture in Psalm 127 verse 1. And it says this, Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. And unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Now, we're talking about building um, our lives. It is more about uh, when, when we uh, read the scripture, unless the Lord builds the house, unless the Lord is building our lives, then we build in vain and we labor in vain. Unless the Lord is watching over us and everything we do, we do it in vain. So um, friends, with that being said, Let's take a quick look at what the previous weeks were all about. Week one, we looked at how do we build with God in our lives? How do we build with God? Uh, week two was the foundation. What do we build on? What are we building on? And that focused so much on Jesus Christ. And, and uh, Jonathan did an incredible job with that. So go back and listen to that sermon if you'd like. And then this week, we're going to be looking at why do we build the purpose of our lives, rediscovering God's purpose for our lives. And obviously, you might, you might have noticed, but uh, the lockdown has challenged so many of us in so many different ways. And not just the lockdown, but a change of lifestyle, a, a challenge to a different way of living and uh, financial challenges, uh, personality, personal challenges, and just all of that. Uh, our, even our personalities are being challenged. Um, so with that, we are hoping hoping and trusting that God will rebuild our lives structured around Him. And today we will discover the purpose of our lives. And with that being said, let's pray together. Father, we invite you in today. I pray that you will speak every word through me, Lord. I pray and trust that you will lay down purpose again in people's lives, that they will live lives not for themselves, not, not for anything worthless, but for you and for you alone, Jesus. You are so worthy. Father, and I pray that even throughout this sermon, may, may people rediscover you. May they experience the intimacy and the goodness of who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Great friends, so we're going to read from a scripture, Luke chapter 14, verse 15 to 24. Now, uh, to give you some context surrounding this, Jesus was invited to enjoy a banquet with Pharisees. Now, Pharisees were uh, the religious leaders of the time, and he accepted this, this invitation. And it's uh, one of the le lesser times that we see Jesus hanging out with the religious leaders of the time. Many of them were unfortunately corrupt. So um, he's spending time with them and having a banquet. And while he's having this banquet, he's teaching them. And he's teaching them uh, specifically on something that there's a lot of dispute in that time. And it's got to do with the afterlife, all right? Life after death, heaven and hell. And um, he says something that confirms like um, that heaven is for real, that, that there is an afterlife. And it prompts this response, which sets an incredible parable that, that describes purpose of our life so well in motion. So let's read this. Verse 15, when one of those who reclined at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. But he, that's Jesus, said to that man, which was probably a Pharisee, a man once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at the time for the banquet, he sent his servant to say to those who had been invited, come for everything is now ready. I want to pause here just for a short moment. I want, to, I want you to notice two things about this man's statement. Number one, this man believes that God's kingdom, meaning when we will be with God in a physical sense, is a far from now an abstract concept. 
It is not an imminent, current, real concept, but far from now. And number two, his statement reveals that he's very certain that he will be there. Um, and this, this prompts Jesus to start off with this parable and mentions my first point for today. My first point is this, the offered invitation that Jesus speaks of this banquet and that there's an offered invitation. Now, I want to I want to define a little bit the invitation and and what this banquet is. Um, obviously, it's not physical; it's metaphorical. He used parables a lot in many ways to teach people, but um, uh, it is uh, the banquet itself describes uh, God's kingdom, and this kingdom is not just happening when we die and are physically with God. It is something that Jesus came to bring, the kingdom of God in motion right now. And here are some invitations that are throughout scripture that God and Jesus Christ invites us to that we can see this invitation to the banquet as being. Number one, Jesus invites us to rest. In Matthew 11 verse 28, 29, Jesus says, come to me, all who are heavy laden and I will give you rest. And this is a true and deep rest for our souls. It's not just um, rest of physical exhaustion, but one of emotional exhaustion, one of stress, anxiety. It's a spiritual rest. Another invitation is one of redemption. Um, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, it says, In Him, that's Jesus, we have redemption by His blood, forgiveness of sins. You see, the greatest problem we will ever face in our lives, friends, it is not one that um, uh, of, of the challenges of this life. It's going to be the one that, that we are separate from God. There are challenges, sin. And Jesus came to deal with sin through redemption. That's a second invitation. And finally, in, there's an invitation of rejoicing in Christ. Psalm 16, verse 11, there's this massive rejoicing from accepting this invitation. There's an offered invitation. And those are the things that this invitation holds. So remember that as we read on about this banquet. Verse 18. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a field and I must go out and see it. Please have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I go to examine them. Please have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, therefore I cannot come. A second point here is the rejected invitation. There are three different excuses that mankind has been using all over millennia, and I think before the lockdown happened, many of us might have been using these excuses without us even realizing. Number one, the first man says, I bought a property, uh, I bought a field, and I go to see it. You know what's the crazy thing about this? Is that never did people go in the evenings when banquets were happening to look at new properties. This man was not going to actually see his property, but possessions, have been a major cause for us, mankind, rejecting the offered invitation from Jesus. Um, and and it's, it's all so based on a lie that we believe that the possessions we have in this world will, will bring us a greater love and, and greater quality of life than what Jesus Christ can. And it's a lie. And the second thing, the second uh, rejection that, that we see here is work. This, uh, this farmer bought five yoke of oxen and he, he went to examine it. Friends, once again, who examines ox in the evenings? Culturally, this doesn't make sense because um, it, 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 it didn't really happen. And it keeps so many people from the invitation work that we're constantly busy. Um, I can't tell you how many times people have told me during this lockdown, they, they're afraid to go back to work. They're afraid that things start normalizing again because they're enjoying so much time with the Lord right now. And they know it'll be taken away from them when they have to work. And friends, um, no, this is... Uh, work is also another way that we try and validate our identities. We try and make something of life. This is the reason I'm here is my work. No, it's not. It's not our purpose and it can never provide what, what God wants to provide. Because you see, his invitation is a daily one. It's not a once off and now you're saved and it's all gone. It's a daily invitation to daily enjoy these things of God that I've mentioned here. And work so often keeps us from that. And finally, the third excuse. 
had to do with family. Um, the, the wife did not keep him away from anything but from the banquet and from God. Um, and you see, I, I recognize here that marriage definitely has duties and family has duties. But the important thing to note here is that nothing, nothing should be taking your time from God. Your, you accepting the invitation. I almost want to say this. You can never blame your family taking your time from God. You can only blame. We can only blame ourselves and the way we prioritize and the way we manage and live our own lives. And now uh, Luke, while writing this, doesn't really give so many reasons and explanations into these excuses. The main point here is just that people could, came up with whatever they could just to avoid and reject the invitation. So why? Why do we make these excuses? Why, why do we all fall in this trap? The only reason why I can preach this is because I've been there and, and it is even a struggle today for me, a constant thing. But do we perhaps believe that these things, these reasons we reject the invitation from God, um, maybe that's why I am here. We, we make the purpose of life this, that we are here for these things. Is this all there is to life? I mean, is the reason for my life that I, I go through school and waste as much time as I can, just waiting to pass the time. Then I can matriculate, get a degree, become a student. Um, as a student, get a job because I need to pay off my student debt, um, find a wife, have children, and put them through exactly the same cycle while I'm busy building my empire that not I nor really my children will be able to enjoy, but maybe their children, and by that time someone has squandered it. Why are we here when all of that is so temporary. Um, the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon writes this whole book and the whole book is actually pretty depressing. He uses the word vanity in that book 34 times. Vanity, vanity. Everything is just vanity. It's, it's worthless. It, it means nothing. It comes to nothing. The Hebrew word for vanity is chabel and it means mist. It's all mist. It's all a, a facade, an appearance of something that just disappears. When I was a young boy, um, I loved playing PlayStation and a game that I played was called Crash Bandicoot. And I went to visit uh, friends of mine and uh, they had a PlayStation 2 where we played Crash Bandicoot, but they had no memory cards. And a memory card is what you needed to save your progress in this game. And without a memory card, you can't turn off the console uh, without losing your progress. You have to save it to the memory card. And so they didn't have a memory card at that time. And we were waiting to buy one. So I went and visited them on the Friday and we started playing Crash Bandicoot. We played the whole Friday. We played the whole Saturday. And by Saturday evening, we had progressed so far in this game. It was close to finish. And at that moment, while we were playing, his little brother, um, young boy, runs across the room and accidentally trips over the power cable of his PlayStation, erasing the past two days of playing progress that we could not save. And I must say that at that age, I was probably about 11, it, it left such a lasting Im impression on me that all this effort I've put in now means nothing and I have nothing to show for it. That three years later, four years later, when I came to faith in Jesus Christ, it was because I realized and recognized that only living a life for Him is one that will last past my lifetime. I want to take a little bit of a detour and read from John chapter 1, verse 1, as we do try and discover what is the meaning, what is the purpose. John chapter 1, verse 1 says this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him, nothing was made that was made. And verse 14 says this, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Now this word, word, in the Greek is the word logos. You might have heard that word often, the word logos. And that word logos was not actually used in a religious sense. It was a Greek word to mean many other things, of which one of the most commonly used uh, meanings of this word logos was reason. To reason. To have reason. To be the reason. 
Now I want to read to you the scripture again with that meaning in mind. It goes like this. In the beginning was the reason for everything. And the reason for everything and for life was with God. And the reason for everything was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him and without anything, nothing was made uh, without Him. And verse 14, and the reason for everything, for life and existence became flesh. And He dwelt among us. We have seen His glory. Friends, the reason for everything is not a what and it's not a where, it's a who. It's a person and his name is Jesus. If you look at these invitations, an invitation to rest, who is it that says, come to me all who are tired and and heavy laden and I will give you rest, Jesus. Redemption, in him we have redemption and forgiveness of sins. Who is him? Jesus. Jesus is the reason for everything. Jesus is the reason and the purpose of our lives, the, the one we live for. All we can ever give ourselves to that will mean anything past this lifetime. And that comes to the third point. Is that when these people rejected the invitation, it was open up. There's an open invitation. In Luke chapter 14 verse 21 we read, So the servant came and reported these things to his master. And then the master of the house became angry and said to his servant, Go out! Quickly to the streets and lanes of the city and bring in the poor, bring in the crippled, bring in the blind, bring in the lame. Let them come and feast. I mean, bring in the poor. This is not just a physical poor, but a spiritual poor. Money will not save them. Money will not save the poor people sitting on the corner of the street and it will not save you. The reason for everything Jesus invites the poor in, he saves. Bring in the crippled. Friends, all of us have been crippled by our sin. All of us, and we need Jesus to restore. We need Jesus to to restore us to the Father. The blind, all of us have been blind to our own sin, to our own wickedness. And we need the reason. We're, We're broken apart from Jesus, but He gives sight. He did it in a physical manner when He was on earth, and He does it today, physically and spiritually. He lets us see. He is the reason. Bring in the lame. Bring in the lame. Most of us cannot even help ourselves. We can't. So can the church rise up and help? Can you, listening to this, can you rise up and help? Help the lame, help the poor, help the blind. Not just in a physical sense, but a spiritual sense. I'm calling on everyone who hears this invitation. The invitation has been opened up. And yes, we've rejected it daily. Christ continues to open it up to say, I'm the reason for everything. I am the reason for your living. Do you want to know me? Scripture continues. It says, And the servant said, Sir, what you have commanded has been done. And still there is room. And the master said to the servant, Go out to the highways and hedges. Compel people to come in. Can we go and compel people? Can you compel your own soul, your own spirit in you? Can you compel yourself to accept an invitation daily, one of rest, one of redemption, one of joy in Christ? Can we do that? For I tell you, none of those men who are invited shall taste my banquet. Before that, there's so much space, so much room in the Father's house for all of us. Go and compel. So friends, I want to conclude with this. I want to tell you today that the purpose of your life, the purpose of life, is not a what, it's not a why, it's not a where, it's not a, it's not a materialistic thing. Everything on this earth, materialistic, it will mean nothing to you the moment your life passes on. But it is a who, it is a who, it is a Jesus who invites you in to experience true rest with Him. He invites you to be redeemed and restored to the most loving and incredible relationship you will ever experience with the Father. It is one of joy where you can constantly live every day rejoicing in who Jesus is regardless of circumstances, regardless of your struggles, regardless of all of that. So today I want to compel you. I want to compel you all to accept this invitation. 
to truly open up your hearts once again to say and to recognize and to name what are the things that I've been living my life uh, about? What, what are the things I've been centering my life around? What has been the purpose that I've been living for? And to turn and name those things, turn away and to say, I will live for the glory, the love of Jesus Christ and Him alone in every part of my life. So I invite you all to respond to this message. I'm going to pray with us. Um, so let us, let us open our hands and open our hearts. And um, if you want to accept this invitation today, you can, you can pray this prayer in your mind with your mouth after me. And um, yeah, let's do this. Father, today we praise you and we thank you for this invitation. Thank you that the invitation has been laid down because of Christ's coming Thank you that the invitation is open, whether I reject it or not, Lord. Lord, I repent and say I am sorry for rejecting your invitation on a daily basis for my possessions, my work, and even my, my family in an unhealthy sense. And Lord, today I open my, my heart and my hands and I say I accept your invitation. Lord, I will go, I will be like the servant who compels people to come into your house. And Father, I will be one and desire to be one who represents your love to this world wherever I go. Father, we invite you in. We love you above everything. And we give you all the honor and the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, friends. Thank you so much, Christian. That was such a timely word for, I believe, for our church and our family in this season. Guys, isn't it amazing that God allowed all of our doing to be stopped so that we can come face to face, face with this invitation? I must say that the, the fact that God is sovereign has been such an anchor for my soul. We were just, just like the people in the parable of Luke. We were so busy chasing off the possessions, finding our purpose in the things we do, in our work, and also what this lockdown has revealed in so many families is the unrestored places. And we come to a place where we, where we ask ourselves, what is the purpose of all of this? I'm going to read you a scripture from Romans 8 verse 28. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to His purposes. Friends, the invitation today is the one of loving God. All of our love unto God will flow into a beautiful purpose of Him working everything together for the good. It starts with us as we accept this invitation. Today, you said yes to an invitation of rest, true rest for your soul, an invitation saying yes to a redeemed life. No longer will we be like the people in Luke, in the parable, chasing after possessions, but we will have an intimate relationship with our Father who knows everything we need before we even ask Him. No longer will we work for purpose, but we will work from purpose, loving our Father, working for His kingdom, being creative in seeing that His kingdom will come in whatever sphere of society you are in. And lastly, the unrestored places in your family life. Well, friends, we have a hope. We have hope that we know the one who is able to restore everything. He is able to heal every broken part and we can live with faith that He will do that. Like the scripture says, and we know, we have confidence that God will work everything for the good, for His purposes. If you said yes today to the invitation, I want to encourage you to walk in this confidently. You can know that after this lockdown, after this time of rebuilding, that your life of work and your life will overflow from being with God, not working for God. But everything you do will just be an overflow of your love for Him and His love for you. Can we close our eyes as I end up for us in prayer? Father, thank you that we could respond today to this invitation. Thank you, Father, that 
we can know that our lives have as purpose, Father, because of what you have done. Lord, we say yes to you. We say yes to everything you have. Lord, we want to walk confident in this call. Father, I pray that you will encourage hearts today, that every heart that's listening to this will know that they have a purpose in life, Father, because of who you are, because they have accepted your love. And Father, I pray that in this season, you will reset our minds in the way we think why we are here. We will work and we will live from our overflow of our relationship with you. Father, we love you. We praise you for you are good in every season. Amen.